Welcome to another episode of Ask Prebuilt, the series where I answer your questions about Seven Days to Die, Valheim, other stuff, and myself. If you want your question answered in a future video, make sure to put Ask Prebuilt before your question so I can filter it and find it easily. Let's get into the questions. Zlayton Morrison wants to know, in game mechanic terms, what does the loot slider actually do? From my experience, all it appears to do is delete loot. The Loot Abundance slider governs how much loot you actually get from containers. If you would have normally gotten 159mm in a container on 100% loot, you would get 300 on 200% loot, and you'd get 75 9 mm on 50% loot. Now, you said all it appears to do is delete all loot. And it doesn't, but it definitely can be seen that way. If an item isn't stackable and is instead something like a pair of steel boots, the percentage of your loot slider can be viewed as essentially a modifier of the chance on getting that singular item. So let's say you open a container and the game does all the loot rolls and says you're getting a pair of boots. It would then take that loot percentage and that would govern your chance of actually getting the item. So if you roll a pair of steel boots with only 25% loot on, you probably have about a 25% chance to actually get the boots. From my testing, it doesn't seem like putting the loot up to 200% would get you two pairs of boots. It only really seems to benefit stackable items at that point. So that's why it seems like you get nothing from containers when you have reduced loot. You just have really bad luck. Angel Maldita wants to know if I ever play on PvP servers, and if so, would you be interested in grouping up? I do not play PvP in Seven Days to Die. One, I don't really like survival PvP. It's generally pretty unbalanced because you're always going to lose to groups or people who played the server before you, but it's extra unbalanced because it's also a role-playing game. So if someone's level 1, they stand almost no chance against someone who is level 100, who has double the health, a lot of extra perk points, and much better loot available to them. Also, the game is clunky, and combat really isn't that enjoyable to begin with. It's not very satisfying to kill someone in this game. It's kind of like playing Fallout 3, but it's PvP. The game is very unwieldy and is far too rough around the edges to make PvP either fun or balanced, in my opinion. If I want PvP, I'll play a really highly optimized and balanced PvP dedicated game. Rylan Vance wants to know if you could choose between adding in more weapons in an upcoming alpha or adding in more armor variety, which do you think would be more important to the game right now? I actually don't think either of these are important to the game whatsoever. You have six classes of melee weapon, almost all of which have three tiers. You also have five classes of ranged weapons, most of which have four types with pistols and bows having five. There's a healthy selection of weapons in this game. Armor as it stands is already oversaturated. Leather armor and iron armor do nothing and aren't worth bothering with as you'll have them for about five minutes before you get to military and steel anyway. So adding in more armors would be pointless without a full rework of the armor system, which would involve a much more complicated armor system, either using some kind of scaling damage resistance system, which gives diminishing returns and goes into the hundreds if not thousands, or using a New Vegas style damage threshold system, or coming up with something else entirely. None of that being something I would want them to waste their time on reworking, considering how long it's taking them just to do this current update. Things that add a little bit more flavour to the game, like new weapons and new armours, are really for the modders to bother with. Seven Days to Die after 10 years does not need even more feature creep. The fun pimps have decided to scope out for 3 or 4 tiers of items, with about 12 different classes of weapons if you include robotic turrets, 13 if you include traps. I think they have enough variety in that regard for a complete game. Hopefully the idea they had to rework clothing into dozens of different RPG style outfits with magical effects has been scrapped, so that they can just finish the game and leave things like that to modders. Grohl Grimm asks, if I place a land claim block next to a POI I was about to enter, would it stop the zombies from spawning in? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> but you get an A plus for creativity. Nolan Helper wants to know, how do you stop from hitting a wall in 7 days to die? After 100 days or so, you're basically maxed and there's not much to progress towards. And Marcelo had a similar question, so I'll answer both at the same time. You can't. The game has no story, the game has no end game content, it just becomes grinding out ammo, building and fighting hordes. And that is enough for some people who like that grind, particularly the people who are into the game for the survival aspects, and they can play that same loop over and over again for hundreds of hours. I, however, do not enjoy that gameplay loop, so when I have everything by about day 30, I just stop playing that playthrough. 
I know I'm going to survive all the way up to day 700 or whatever if I was to sit and do it, because the game doesn't get considerably harder after the final spike of difficulty which would be the demos starting to spawn in your Horde Knights. Once you've dealt with that, you're going to beat every Horde Knight, it's just a matter of keeping things repaired and keeping guns firing. Coolgamer12 wants to know when I play 70 Days I, what percentage do I normally like or prefer to play on with regards to XP and loot, and does it feel cheaty to have an XP multiplier at 150% or even 300%? So I normally just play on 100% loot and XP, I don't really rely on loot to progress, instead I do trader jobs to get the vast majority of my gear, and I use mining to get most of the other materials I need. So loot percentage genuinely doesn't affect the game very much for me. I did a playthrough on Inside Nightmare with 25% loot and it genuinely had no effect on my progression. I was still pretty much done with the game by about day 30. And I play 100% XP because speeding up the game any further would mean my playthroughs are genuinely faster than most matches of insert popular PvP game here. But to answer the second part, yeah, it does feel a little bit cheaty to put the XP up to me because I can easily handle the problems that come with that. But to a lot of players, turning up the XP is actually going to make your game a lot harder. If you're playing on 3 times XP, yes, you're progressing 3 times faster, but that also comes with hordes getting harder 3 times faster, and POIs getting harder 3 times faster. If you can't handle that really fast pace, the game is going to become legitimately impossible for you very quickly. So if you're a new player, I would advise that you just stick to the normal 100% XP is a good balance. But as for it being cheaty, who cares? Play your own way. I know people who turn the zombies off and just enjoy scavenging around collecting materials and building. It's a game, you paid for it, and you can play it however you want. Don't let anyone make you feel guilty for playing a video game the way you want to, especially if it's single player. It's really none of their business. Crab Clown Jimmy, subscribe to Jimmy, he make good content. If a YouTube career doesn't pan out, what would your next dream job be? It's a cop-out answer, but probably a Twitch streamer. It's actually an easier job in terms of the work you have to do, as you don't need much pre-planning, and you kind of just get 8 hours of content for 8 hours of work. But it's much more challenging to break out as a success on Twitch, because discoverability is almost zero on Twitch. If you're an aspiring Twitch streamer, do yourself a favour and use YouTube and make videos as well, and direct the audience you build on YouTube over to Twitch. It's a slow trickle over and only maybe like 10% of your YouTube audience is going to go over, but it's still a lot faster and a lot more reliable than waiting for people to just randomly click on you on Twitch. There's no algorithm on Twitch that's going to pull you forward gradually. You really have to do a lot of external work to build your Twitch audience. I know a lot of people who have been streaming on Twitch several times a week for years and they can still barely break 10 average viewers. If they cultivated an audience on a much easier platform, things like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, they would have a much easier time of it because those platforms are very, very good for growing audiences and if you can convert 10% of it to a Twitch audience, you have a bigger Twitch audience. Amos Young wants to know what's my favourite and least favourite POI in 7 Days to Die? My favourite POI would probably be Butcher Pete's. It seems to always spawn very close to the trader, which I like, and it's extremely easy to cheese it for a tier 4 POI. My least favourite is Deshong Tower. It's much larger than all other tier 5 POIs, with much more danger, but it gives you nothing better than any of the other tier 5 POIs in the game. Stormer Cool wants some tech info. What microphone do you use and which will you buy next? I use the Shure SM7B. It's overpriced, overhyped and overrated, but it does work and I have no plans of replacing it for the next few years at least. I was going to put a section in here where I recommend another microphone used by another creator. If I recall correctly, Guns, Nerds and Steel also uses the Shure SM7B, but Wayward Echo, I think, uses another microphone, which I think is cheaper and honestly, in my opinion, it sounds better. At the time of recording this though, it's very early in the morning in the US. He doesn't seem to be awake yet, so I don't know exactly what microphone he's using. If I remember, I will put it in a pinned comment at the top of the description for people who want to use the same microphone sim. Speaking of Wayward Echo, subscribe to him. He's been very helpful behind the scenes. He's a very good friend of the channel. His content is exceptional, and he's part of the secret lizard government who are currently trying to take over Seven Days to Die. You are being rescued. Please do not resist. Glish's wonders. Would you ever consider playing Space Engineers? 
I have quite a bit actually. I'm not making content on it though because it doesn't have much public interest these days. Before someone tries to tell me about how I'm wrong, the player counts and search interests are lower than 7 days to die, so why would I ever bother pivoting to a game that's less successful than the one I'm already playing? And finally, Raven wants to know, do you feel that you've made any mistakes during the start of your channel? Definitely there were too many instances of me trying to do let's play style series when I don't like them. Also can someone please tell me what the plural of series is, I refuse to google it, I just keep saying series and it sounds wrong. I don't like watching let's play stuff, I don't like making let's play stuff, they always hurt my channel and they always wreck my mental health. The only reason I ever did them was because of pressure from other channels that were seeing success doing them, but I've tried to do 5 of them and the only success was Desert Ranger. And by success, I mean I finished it at a satisfying conclusion, as it's the only one that even made it past day 14. Desert Ranger succeeded because it was at a rare time where I wasn't burned out on playing the game, and for all the efforts, the videos didn't do that well, except one horde based video which got 130k views so far, and is currently my fourth most viewed video by accident, which is kind of more annoying than anything else. It got me 600 subscribers and it made me a solid amount of money for what would have been 3 hours of work at the time, but Desert Ranger was 28 videos and approximately 20% of everything I got from it was from that one video that I accidentally took off. Still, one outstanding success from about 50 total Let's Play videos across my channel is a terrible ratio. It's a real lesson in not trying to follow the crowd, give yourself credit and trust your own intuition and do the things that you want to do. Because out of my top 12 performing videos, 11 of them were things that I had faith in that I wanted to do and that I did my own way. As usual, if you want your questions answered, be sure to put Ask Prebuilt in the question so that I can find it. It can be on any video, I searched my entire channel for the phrase so just do it wherever you want. Remember though, this series does rely on you to ask the questions to keep it going, so if you like it, ask me stuff. If you want to support me on Patreon and get early access to videos, you can find the link in the description. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.